The next speaker is also from uh, Swiss. Uh, Julian Rodriguez is talking about novel data analysis strategy at the Swiss OGS in about seven, eight days. Good morning to everyone. So what this talk is about is how can we make use of historical data to retrieve key performance indicators. So we are going to focus on four points. The first one is the definition of what is a KPI. The second one is how can we relate those KPIs to a specific system components and we will provide new potential KPIs to be implemented and a short summary highlighting the main output of the presentation. So what are KPIs? Yes, we, we want to define a metric about the quality and the performance of a specific observable unit. What for? Because we want to improve at the operational level, but also from the strategic point of view. So how will your SLR station benefit from such key KPIs? So first of all, you can schedule specific technical sessions oriented towards the unit that you want to analyze. Second, you can also judge the readiness of a station for a given purpose. For example, if you want to observe a specific campaign. Third, you want to sleep good at night knowing that your system is up and running to the best of your knowledge. So let's uh, do a, a brief recap about different KPIs that are already existing in the in, in their normal operation of any station. So we have the timing units, and for the timing units, we can we can define or we can distinguish between two. The first one would be how can we synchronize the pulse per second that we derive from the station with respect to the pulse per second that we derive from our timing unit, and we need that to define the time scale of timestamps. So in this case, we can just compare the offset uh, between the two of them and how constant it is in time. Second of all, we, can, we have the timing unit, but for the time of flight. And, uh, but not only that, we have to consider also the geometrical path involved into, uh, into the propagation of the, of the beam through the, through the receiving and transmitting chain, but uh, from the star diode until the reference point of the, of the telescope. And uh, by doing this, uh, we also have to measure it in an independent way so that we can assess central tendencies and dispersion of, of these differences. And we can relate those differences with respect to the nominal specifications of our system. So furthermore, we can have uh, within our optical units, we have different lenses, mirror our filters, and we just measure the transmittance for those elements and compared to the nominal specifications. And why is this relevant? Because you may have changes in the alignment of the different optical elements, but not only because you also have to consider that the coating is also a function of time and there must be even dust. So one has to, from time to time, even clean the, the different elements. For the telescope and the beam alignment, we can just compute the mount model, which includes the coup de path uh, for, uh, for our station. This is very specific for Simmerwald. And uh, we assess the mean a posteriori error of unit weight. So for that, we see how good the pointing is and if it is behaving as expected. So this is highly correlated with the returns rate that we receive for specific satellites, but we will see that later on. Then we have the control software unit that, of course, we need to see that our software is improving because there are new developments. We have to refactor or we, have, we are using different branches. So we have outcome of scoring functions that are assessing how much our software is changing with respect to time and if we are doing better, if the algorithms are improving or not with respect to what we are doing. So uh, there are many other things, but we, I want to keep it short. So just let's go to the new stuff. Return rates. So for doing this experiment, as I said before, it's very focused on Zimmerwald. So for Zimmerwald, for Legios, it's a particular target because it's the target that allows allow us to not exceed 10% 10 10 for the return rate. So that means that we avoid the use of the variable, variable neutral density filter. 
On top of that, we have available the cross-section for Lagos 1, so we can even compute theoretical estimates of the return rate as a function of the passes. This is also an interesting uh, feature. And finally, we have from our station a very good visibility, but not only that, we also have good predictions, so we can shorten the, the rate gain, and the range gate, and increase the signal-to-noise ratio. So if we do that, we can avoid the distinction between day and night passes, which is important for the next comparison. So having said so, we choose the time span of one year to account for seasonal variability. And on top of that, we do feature extraction on a monthly basis. So what are we seeing here? We have different passes, and we have the return rates for passes during the month of March 2020. So we, at this stage, we, don't, we do not distinguish between signal and noise, but we just compute the return rates per pass. So we can also see that um, in this example, we show different binning sizes to see how, by how much the signal is smoothed if, if we increase the binning size by a lot. And we found that the limit is two minutes or uh, two minutes in time. And by after exceeding two minutes, then the signal the, the signal to noise ratio uh, worsens considerably. So that's important. That uh, as we said before, we want to do this analysis on a year for a year or most a year. So we have to fix the winning size for the remaining comparisons. And as you can see, it's it's, it's maybe not so clear to really see the patterns. So on uh, on top of this figure, we will we will just adjust a, a surface depending on the geometry because of course it's, it's a spherical geometry. So we make use of a two-dimensional Fourier series of degree and order two. So what we see here is just the the fitting, uh, the surface fitting, and the observed data for two months of of different years. And we see interesting, interesting results. So first of all, the, our observed or our estimated return rates are in agreement with our theoretical ones. So around 7.1 photoelectrons per second at 45 degree elevation. This is what, what we can see on the right hand side. Um, there is also one, one important thing that is we see that close to the horizon, we have a very poor return rate. So this is to be considered on top of the, 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 the plot on the top, on the bottom, that also depicts that there is one part of the horizon where, from where we didn't get many measurements. So this highlights that there are uh, asymmutal dependencies that are not considered by the theoretical link equation. So this brings us to the point that could we increase the elevation mask? Would the, the increase in the elevation mask would make sense? And further on, we, would we lose arc length due to increasing the, the, the elevation mask? Those two are correlated, and one has to find a balance to not lose this, also the coverage arc-wise. But also, we can see that the, the, there are specific points or for specific passes where the, root mean square, where the number of return is, is higher than in other parts of the, of the horizon. So, it will also have an impact on the, on the normal point formation, and it's, it's worth to investigate it. But we, we said before that we were doing an, a year an analysis for one year only. But uh, in, in the previous slide, we were showing just a specific example for a specific month. In this one, we see the, the time history for, a specific, uh, for, for these months, where we did um, the following analysis. So we extracted these statistical estimators that you can see on, on top of the slide. And we first just got an average all out, and we got the first results that you can see here. So you, you see that it's really inhomogeneous, and you can barely say anything about it. But if, if you look at the data, the data is actually telling you that these particular months were affected by the number of good passes. That means that we didn't get a high return rate for those passes. But since we want to characterize the signal, we filter out those beans that were not containing any returns, and we focus on the ones that were actually classified as good measurements. We did that using the, our real-time filter plus a screening procedure. If we do that, we see that the, the trend is way more stable. But still, by the end of 2020, we see that there was a fluctuation that was not 
of the same order of magnitude for the pre previous months. So one step further, we wanted to corroborate these results with measurements that we did with the power meter. And the two of them were highly correlated. So in this case, the return rates gave us the opportunity to spot a system flow related to the health of our laser system. Does it mean that it always points into this direction? Not necessarily. Correlation does not mean causation, and one has to be very careful. But at the first glance, it provides us with a flag that will help us to have a check in our system and hopefully fix it. So just the, the key points of my presentation is that the KPIs may help to spot system flaws, and this is quite important. And from our analysis, we were able to, to find ways that we can use for optimizing our observations, the information about the overall performance of the system over time. We enabled a comparison between the theoretical and observed ones, and the, good, the two of them were in good agreement. And the variability of the system may impact the quality of the normal points, since those are very uh, is they are, there is a spatial dependency and also target dependency and many other dependencies, but it would be worth to have a look at how much the impact is and if it is worth to take that into consideration. Having said so, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Julian. Any comments or questions to Julian? Julian, I didn't... I don't think I understood well your comment about not using a variable neutral density filter above 10%. Can you elaborate yeah. on that? The thing is that when the return rate is higher than 10%, the variable neutral density filter activates and reduces the return rate, so you keep it to a minimum. So with Lagios, due to its, its properties and its about orbital regime and optical properties, we barely reach that limit. So you can really see the tendency when, when they are through the past. That means that you have lower return rates close to the horizon and higher when you are reaching the zenith. So that's what I meant, that you can really see what you would expect from the theoretical behavior. And if you have LEO satellites, for example, you would have a cutoff, and you cannot see this dependency with respect to the elevation. Thank you. Thank you. More questions? No. Okay, so thank you, Julian.